All right, I'm gonna explain to you what a safe environment is. For what happened when Natalie disappeared, Hilltop, that's uh, low-income apartments in Chapel, Nebraska. If I'd have still been renting that place, then I could have gone there. That would have been a safe place. That would have been a place where I could sit down and not have to move, be in a familiar place, not have to spend all of my money, not be assaulted by crazy people in Boulder, Colorado, not have to listen to screaming all the damn time. Hilltop in Chapel, Nebraska. It was a great place for me while uh, Tamara was my caseworker. Tamara actually did her job. She actually made an effort. Now, that's because Tamara listened, but she just, she didn't just listen. She listened to understand. Um, when she left, I didn't have a caseworker for a few months. That's when I decided to move to Colorado. Now, the point here is that if I had been allowed that, if I could have gotten help getting that, getting a safe place, getting into housing, then I wouldn't have been in that situation, but I needed help doing that. I was not capable of doing those things for myself, and as a result, I've been victimized, bullied, harassed, assaulted, slandered repeatedly, and prevented from making a report. I got several videos on my YouTube where I do sit down with others who realize you can't do it on the internet. And they're like, well, why didn't you go in in person? Well, I did go in in person. Several times I was threatened with arrest for trying to turn in those officers. As far as the abuse by the Bollingers and all of that goes, I needed to go to civil courts. The problem is that all of my time and resources were eaten up and I didn't have the technical ability to do most of the things that y'all are telling me to do. Although I still tried. But because you don't see me trying, I must not be making an effort. Isn't that right? So, uh... Right now, my back hurts a lot. So I am walking around trying to make it go numb. Oh my god. That's the thing, is that I was never allowed to speak on my own behalf. I was never allowed to show evidence Police never collected evidence from me, and they never took my report. I should have been allowed a place to sit down with the evidence and actually write out a police report. Now, because I get scatterbrained, because so many things are going on, and I have to think about all of them, well, it sucks for me. I should be allowed do that. I should be able to go into a police department if I am being abused and not fear further abuse. That's the point. Is that I didn't stalk Natalie. I was the one being stalked. And everything from me leaving Virginia in 2016 on forward 
was me trying to get someone to care enough to put a fucking stop to it. But that's the thing, is that nobody cared. Nobody who should have anyway. Not Jeff Ritter. Not Nicole Peralta. Not Kara Heller. Not the police. Not my family. Certainly not my family. So I had to depend on friends who didn't come forward, didn't come forward, didn't come forward, kept promising, kept making empty promises. All of these empty promises are eating up my time, they're eating up my resources, they're eating up my food, they're eating up my money. You know, after Natalie disappeared, all of my money went to the courts, traveling to the courts and traveling to somewhere safe. I didn't have any other funds. I didn't have another income, and you know what? 700 bucks doesn't go far. Luckily, there were other people who contributed funds. Had it not been for their funds, I would not have been able to eat. I would not have been able to go see my therapist. I wouldn't have been able to do any of the things that I had to do other than go back and forth to court. I wouldn't have been able to put tires on my car. I wouldn't have been able to keep my vehicle insured. The fact is, there's evidence that proves that I'm telling the truth in all of these situations. to do desperate shit because those who are supposed to do something, those people that you pay to do something, did nothing. They did nothing. Before I can get the resources that I need, I need those resources. Isn't that messed up? I needed housing. All right. I was put in an unsafe situation and not allowed to make a report, and I need to be allowed to do that. That's why that stuff keeps running around in my head. But it's a lot of situations now. A lot of people who did really fucked up things and then played victim like David and Betsy Prowl. A lot of people who made empty promises. When they didn't keep their promises, I'm somehow the bad guy for saying something about it. I'm not. <sighs> the problem is that the people who were coming after me and the people who were harming me did so very publicly and very blatantly. And those who were trying to help me were like, don't, don't say my name, don't tell anybody I exist, don't this and don't that. That was my first sign that most of these people were hiding things. That was my first sign that these people were doing something that they shouldn't have been doing. That they were up to no good. People like Danica Garner and Rochelle Shelley Gatewood. Then there's people who offered to help who uh, didn't. When I finally got to Wyoming, for the help that Rihanna had promised. Rihanna did not keep her word. I was dependent on her. And that's why I need an honest day in court so I don't have to depend on others. So I don't have to depend on alcoholics and meth heads. So that I don't have to go from place to place unable to function before I can function to do the things that I need to do to be able to write these reports. I need a safe environment. If I have to scramble for the money to try to get a roof over my head, I've been. That's exactly what I've been doing, but it hasn't been a safe environment. At Sally Trion's, it was too loud and too violent. 
at Shannon Alvarado's, it was too loud, way too loud. And abusive. And my dad's, it was too loud and abusive. And I have to fucking somehow function through all this. Meanwhile, I have all this stuck in my head. All of it. And I need a place to sit down and write it out. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck rolling around in my head forever because I will forever have consequences because I was never allowed. I was never allowed a safe environment to sit down and do those things. Being rushed through, that's pretty fucked up. Now, Officer Amanda Jonas... She wrote down on my paperwork that she did not take my report. However, in the video here on this very YouTube, she claims that she did. Now, why is it on the paperwork that she said she didn't take my report? She claimed that it was resolved by my arrest. How fucked up is that? Ah, yes, many of you hate me, so it's not fucked up in your mind. It's magically okay in your mind. Then again, if it happens to you, you whine like a bitch. I am on another Facebook ban for saying Americans are cowards. That's because they are. If Americans were not cowards, we would have the Constitution of the United States. It would actually mean something. The First Amendment right would apply to everyone. Everyone would get to speak. I was harassed and bullied by a lot of people on the internet, but also in real life. And that bullying was not limited to just calling names. It was slander that resulted in other people physically harming me. From the police, to the public, to even some of the people that I called friends. Folks don't like it when I do it back. They think it's me being some sort of a terrible person when I do it back. No, I'm not a terrible person. I'm overwhelmed, and I don't have a safe environment to sit down in peace and fucking quiet and work on this shit. I wouldn't have needed to ask Aunt B for help. If I still had that place in Chapel, Nebraska, I wouldn't have needed to ask her for help with having a mailbox. I wouldn't have had to depend on her because she was not dependable, obviously. I wouldn't have had to depend on Miss Peaches. I wouldn't have had to depend on Mandy Hughes. I wouldn't have had to depend on any of these people. I wouldn't have had to depend on Katie Cahill. See, a lot of these people don't understand. I'm frustrated because I can't do the things that they want me to do without what I had there at Hilltop. It's very simple. It's low-income housing, my disability money, and internet. Plus, I had my phone at the time. If I needed to make phone calls during the day, I could. If I needed to call professionals during the day, I could. The problem is that I was completely shut down and I'm begging for death at this point. In Chapel, Nebraska, while I was there at that low income place, I'm, I'm begging for, for death. I'm begging because I couldn't get anybody to listen. And you know what, after Natalie died, well, lots of people were paying attention But that slander, well, that slander uh, went unchecked. Alicia Bollinger hid behind her family while her family came at me and threatened me and harassed me. Her friends as well. The police took part. The police themselves would not investigate any of the things that these people were doing. Like seriously, I just needed them to leave me the fuck alone. When I left Virginia, that was their cue to leave me the fuck alone. 
When I left Virginia, that wasn't giving them permission to send their friends after me by slandering my fucking name. And I was never allowed to defend myself. I wasn't allowed to defend myself in court. I wasn't allowed to defend myself to Natalie or to Maddie. I wasn't allowed to defend myself to the police. This is all before Natalie died, mind you. I moved out of that low-income place in Chapel, Nebraska in November. That's because I couldn't afford to, uh, that was November of 2017. Because I couldn't afford to stay at Ken and Leah's and pay the rent there that kept getting higher and higher and still maintain the place in Chapel, Nebraska. Plus, I was never at the place in Chapel, Nebraska. After Natalie died, that's literally what I needed. I needed a safe place to go where I didn't have to depend on people with a history of victimizing me, with a history of ganging up on me or teasing me or harassing me or stealing from me, where I didn't have to depend on strangers and walk into blind situations. The things I was afraid would happen if nobody went in with me, if I couldn't get anyone to help, those things all happened. People say, you brought it on yourself, Sean. No, I didn't. I was going to all the places that I needed to go before Natalie died. I was going to therapy over the shit that I was put through because Natalie didn't want to tell the truth in Chesapeake, Virginia. Ms. Peaches, I went to her in December of 2016. This is just a couple of months after I left Virginia. And I went there to get her help. But Bear, even though Miss Peaches was listening, she was also drunk, but Bear woke up and Bear decided that he was gonna be just a straight up condescending asshole. He's one of them, you're making excuses types. Okay, well that's fine. Bear, you're one of the most selfish people I know. But that's the thing, is that the second two times that I went over there to talk to Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches was the one who was snappy. She was treating me just like A Bear did, and I needed her help. Now, the fourth time that I went to uh, Miss Peaches for help about that situation, I needed to go get help about Ken and Leah, who stole all my money. If they hadn't stolen my money, by lying to me and taking advantage of me because I was in a desperate situation, then I would have been able to go back to Hilltop. I would have been able to go back to my apartment. But I moved there and immediately they took my money. So immediately I couldn't go back to Hilltop because I was victimized by Ken and Leah Plunkett, or Ken Wilson and Leah Plunkett, I could not go back to Hilltop. I could not go back to an environment that would have been safe. Sure, it's in Chapel, Nebraska, so I would have had people threatening 